uh, have, have um, asked us to create a program that could be adopted globally and recognized as a leader. So I'm, I'm hoping um, and I'm, I'm fairly confident that after today, uh, you're gonna agree that this program will serve as the gold standard of assurance for hotels that are committed to promoting equality and safety for LGBTQ travelers. And I know that's really important too because for the travel advisors on the call because you want that comfort as well when you're booking your clients all over the world that if, if they are with an IGLT accredited hotel that they are going to feel uh, safe um, and welcomed and valued, which is really important. Um, you know, we, we've been working on this, as I mentioned, for years. So it's definitely not something we just threw together quickly. I think you'll find that to be the case today. Um, but I want to thank um, the members uh, at IGLTA that have helped us, board members, particularly you and Jong based out of London. Um, they have provided us so much input and guidance and assistance. Also, I want to give a shout out to our friends at Community Marketing and Insights, Tom Roth and David Paisley in San Francisco. A few years back, they gifted us their TAG program, which those of you in the US or Canada probably remember that program. This one is much more robust. Um, it's based on a, a stringent audited eight point criteria, including training. Um, training is not done by IGLTA, you'll learn about. Um, we have five different members that do offer training. Uh, that will grow around the world as well. But I, I think this program will help travelers to make their choice with peace of mind, knowing that when they stay at an IGLTA accredited property, um, that they will indeed feel safe and welcoming and, and valued. So today we're going to hear, as, as Santiago mentioned, from some leaders within our membership about the accreditation program and also answer your questions. But, but first, I want to introduce somebody to give some remarks. Um, a few years ago, we realized we needed assistance um, with including the transgender community into all aspects of IGLTA. Uh, we had no transgender staff at the time. Um, our website wasn't speaking to transgender travelers. I think our, our suppliers weren't really knowledgeable on how to accept transgender travelers. So we created a travel, uh, a trans advisory council, which this person sits on. And she's also the co-founder and CEO of Transformation Journeys Worldwide. She is a leading expert in transgender inclusion, training, and consulting. She has a super impressive client list of, just to name drop a few, Delta Airlines, B of A, Bank of America, and Home Depot. And she helps these companies and others attract and retain top talent and creating fully trans-inclusive cultures. She's written a memoir, Embrace Your Truth, a journey of authenticity, which she exemplifies uh, every time you talk to her. So she is from my hometown of Atlanta, Georgia, in the United States, and has spoken at our last two conventions, Atlanta and Milan. I don't have the charming Southern accent that she has, um, but I love her dearly. And it is with great pleasure that I introduce this very inspiring and thoughtful leader in our community, Miss Gabrielle Claiborne. John, thank you for that introduction and for providing a space for me to share some comments with you all today. Hi, everyone. Like John said, I am from Georgia, the peach state in the U.S. So if you uh, hear this uh, Southern twang, that's why you're hearing it this morning or this afternoon, wherever you are. Uh, like John said, uh, my name is Gabrielle Claiborne. I use she, her pronouns. Uh, in addition to my work at Transformation Journeys Worldwide, I'm also, like John said, a proud member of IGLT's Trans Advisory Group. You know, today's accreditation conversation is especially relevant to me as a transgender woman, as well as timely for many of us with this being Pride Month. You know, this month is intended to be a time where we celebrate who we are and have always been with determination and resolve. In a time that we share our stories of how living authentically has allowed us to experience unprecedented freedom from the chains of cultural domestication that have kept us paralyzed in the shadows of our truth. Yet with visibility, we often experience a season of reckoning in the form of pushback, especially when our visibility challenges people and cultures to move beyond their own level of awareness, personal beliefs, and even lived experiences. 
this Pride Month has been one of those seasons. Just think about the dynamics that we are seeing unfold before our very eyes from organizations who have traditionally shown their advocacy for the LGBTQ plus community by doing the good work of creating safe and inclusive workplace cultures for their LGBTQ plus employees by showing up at Pride and by offering affirming products and services to their LGBTQ plus customers. Unfortunately, we are now seeing some of these companies cower from the backlash that they are now receiving from certain societal factions that are attempting to eradicate me and my LGBTQ plus siblings. And this is despite my community's efforts to hold these organizations accountable for their actions. These and other organizations need to understand that their advocacy efforts for my community are not for their convenience and benefit, but rather for our safety and well being. Politically and culturally, these last several years have also been a season of pushback. In many countries, global advances in LGBTQ rights are being met with attempts to reverse the progress that has been made. Hateful and dangerous rhetoric accounts for the over 500, you heard that number right, 500 anti-LGBTQ anti plus bills that are sweeping the U.S. just this year with the lion's share of them targeting trans and gender expansive youth. And this reality, as many of you know, is not only a unique reality to the U.S. There are many LGBTQ plus people across the globe who are risking their lives fighting for their very existence. This political and cultural pushback has caused many in my community to experience elevated levels of minority stress. That is the additional layer of chronic stress added on top of the everyday stress navigated by all people that mar marginalized groups experience due to discriminatory laws, views, and policies related to aspects of our humanity whether it be our race, ethnicity, sexual orientation, gender identity, gender expression, disabilities, or any other intersections that we embody. If this isn't a call to action to our allies to ensure that their advocacy efforts are no longer performative, but rather intentional, strategic, community informed and effective, I don't know what is. You see, companies no longer have the luxury of being silent on the matters that affect their LGBTQ bus coworkers and customers. Recently, a colleague of mine shared that organizations can't afford to be ambiguous on their position around LGBTQ plus inclusion because ambiguity is now even more dangerous than taking a position on the matter. And for those organizations who do not heed this guidance, their silence or inaction will be to their detriment as we're already seeing play out in certain instances. Now more than ever, the LGBTQ plus community is looking for and needs organizations who are not only willing to talk the talk, but who are also willing to do the courageous work and walk the walk. With all the minority stress that we're having to deal with, we need to know that there are organizations who have our back, regardless of the pushback that they may receive. And this is true for those of you in the travel industry. And this is one of the reasons that I am so grateful that IGLTA is launching their accreditation program globally to position you when it comes to providing welcoming, safe, and affirming destinations and services to members of the LGBT plus community, no matter what the destination or how far away from home we travel. By you participating in this program, you're sending a message to both your LGBTQ plus employees and customers that one, you recognize either our value as a contributing staff member or as a customer. Two, you are highly aware of the complexities and nuances that we face when we risk showing up at, our, at your destination, unsure of how we will be treated. And three, you have and will continue to do the necessary work to ensure our experiences are safe, equitable, 
and affirming. And speaking of continuing to do the work, IGLTA continues to utilize its global internal external resources and partners who have extensive experience in tourism, hospitality, and DEI education to ensure that their accreditation criteria is not only current, but also cutting edge to what's considered industry standard. And an example of this is earlier this year, IGLTA consulted with the Trans Advisory Group and requested a review of the accreditation criteria to ensure that it would be affirming for trans and gender expansive employees and, cu and cu customers and travelers. Fortunately, our recommendations have been in integrated into the recently socialized IGLTA accredited overview and FAQ communications that many of you may receive. This program, as you heard from John, is based on an eight criteria assessment focused on the LGBTQ plus inclusivity efforts of travel bans. The accreditation is an all or nothing approval. So organizations must meet all eight criteria each year to continue to claim that they are IGLTA accredited. This is not a training or an education program on how to be LGBTQ inclusive. Rather, it's an audit and declaration that the inclusivity efforts are in place. And while applying for accreditation itself is relatively simple, the steps necessary to be inclusive and become eligible as an accredited business are rigorous. So from this, hopefully you can see just how serious and committed IGLTA is in setting you up for success with your LGBTQ plus employees and customers. My community wants to see evidence of your action to back up the promise that you are in fact friendly to us. And what better way to position you for this action than to provide you with a strategy that is already tried and tested. All you have to do is to say yes to this valuable resource. By doing so, you are showing your commitment to promoting equality and safety for all of us. You know, Maya Angelou told us, when we know better, we do better. To become that travel destination and tourism service provider of choice, each of you have a responsibility to continue being and doing better because you know better. And you now know better because of resources like this one that IGLTA affords each and one of you. So the question is, what will you now do with this information? I hope that you all receive these words in the spirit they are given. Happy Pride, everyone. Happy Pride, Gabrielle. Thank you so much for those wonderful, kind words and inspiring words and definitely uh, encouraging words to to take action, uh, because as you said, ambiguity uh, today uh, can be uh, a very dangerous position to be in. Um, so thank you, thank you for those inspiring words, for always being an amazing friend to IGLTA contributor, uh, and of course, uh, just an inspirational voice for all of us to to follow and uh, and yeah, and, uh, and and to keep pushing on the work that we do. Uh, we uh, really uh, do amazing work at IGLTA, and this program has been in the works for more than two years, so we have really prepared uh, this program for the industry. Uh, this is not an improvised program. This is something that has been uh, you know, consulted with experts across the industry. This is something that has been verified, and, uh, and of course, it is an absolutely necessary tool. Uh, in today's world for uh, hospitality businesses. So again, welcome to today's panel. I am so excited to introduce uh, our panelists today. Our panel uh, is going to uh, discuss inclusive global hospitality and how uh, we can uh, effectively create uh, environments of inclusion for LGBTQ plus travelers and LGBTQ plus employees uh, in accommodation businesses. So without further ado, I want to introduce all our panelists today. So uh, if our, our panelists can uh, say a quick hello so everyone can identify them. We have Salome uh, from uh, visiting us from Greece, uh, the marketing director for Temis. There she is. We have David Masawi from South Africa. There he is. And we have Shane Edwards, 
uh, from uh, f visiting us from Osaka. All right, uh, so now that you've identified our panelists, I want to quickly introduce them uh, today. Um, they are amazing experts in the hospitality industry, each of them in their specific fields. So I'll introduce Salomi first. Salomi is the marketing director for Temis Costa Navarino, Greece. Um, you know, she has over 25 years of experience in a diverse range of sectors, including consumer good companies where she has held senior positions. Uh, she's also been part of the NGO sectors and in the tourism and hospitality sector. So Lomi is currently the marketing director of Temes Group. They are the developers of Costa Navarino, an amazing destination in Greece uh, with premium resorts, of which the W, Costa Navarino, was the first hotel in the world to obtain IGLTA accredited status. So uh, they actually finished the process in March. So as um, John told you and as... Um, uh, I think I told you at the beginning, we launched our program in March to partner hotels and member hotels. Uh, and this month, we are doing our global launch. So our partners and members got the opportunity to start applying earlier. And the first hotel to have completed that uh, process was the W Custom Navarino. So Salome so will be representing them today. Uh, we have David Masawi Makan from um, South Africa. He is the human resource manager at the Royal Portfolio, uh, a a wonderful collection of boutique and uh, luxury hotels in South Africa. David was born in Zimbabwe, but was raised in England and Denmark. He returned to Africa in his teenage years and had the opportunity to explore Kenya, Botswana, and South Africa. David um, uh, has been in the uh, hospitality industry from the human resources field for 11 years, and he has a huge appreciation for the diversity of thought and the desire to foster environments where individuals from all walks of life feel accepted and at home in their workplace. So thank you for being here, David. And last but definitely not least, we have Shane Edwards, uh, the general manager at the Swiss Hotel Nankai Osaka, which is our first hotel to be accredited in Asia and is also uh, based in Osaka, which is our host city for our convention next year. So we're really excited that hotels in Osaka are already excited about, um, you know, um, welcoming us and also getting accredited and prepared for uh, our guests as well. So Shane is a hospitality, hospitality leader with more than 20 years of experience. Uh, 15 of those years have been spent uh, in um, the Accord Group, which is an AGLTA Platinum level partner. Uh, Mr. Edwards is also the general manager of the Swiss Hotel. Uh, again, the first hotel in Asia and the first Accord property to have obtained IGLTA accredited status. Um, so uh, Shane is actually originally from New Zealand uh, and uh, has an extensive career that acro across uh, Asia Pacific and North America which has provided him with opportunities to push boundaries for inclusivity, innovation, and diversity in, uh, in this field. So welcome all of you. I am so, so happy to have you here, to have the expert voices, to have uh, hotels that have been through the process of accreditation, but that more than that are really interested and invested in creating in, uh, spaces and environments of inclusion and, uh, and welcomeness for uh, our um, community and for the employees um, that work in your properties. So I want to start today's panel by asking you uh, simply why you think LGBTQ plus in, uh, inclusion is important to you and to your team. So any of you can go ahead and answer this question and jump in um, at any time, but we do want to understand why 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 this, you are invested in, in becoming inclusive to LGBTQ plus people. Uh, okay, Santi, uh, thank you. I'll, I'll start if that's okay. Um, <clears throat> I guess first personally, uh, I've been in the industry, as you said, 20, actually probably a little bit longer than that. Uh, in all fairness, I don't know any different. Uh, coming up as starting as a even as a kitchen kitchen steward, uh, the industry, especially in New Zealand, has always been very inclusive anyway. And uh, it's important to me because a lot of my mentors over the years of, of uh, have come from the LGBT community. So uh, I, I owe a lot to uh, those mentors who have helped me in the past uh, to get to where I am today. So. It's important for me to, uh, you know, I, I don't know any different, if that makes any sense. Uh, 
the LGBT community is super important uh, and has always been a part of my life, my work life uh, for such a long time. Um, I guess for my team, uh, it's hotels uh, similar to airlines of, you know, we, we've had uh, the community with us for, for uh, it's just part of our industry. And, uh, you know, we need to reflect in our business uh, the LGBT community, not only as a workplace, but you know, for, for many of our guests as well. Uh, it's important to have that uh, inclusiveness. And I, I guess working in, in a place like Japan and throughout Asia, uh, while it's, um, it may not be talked about as much, it, it's here every day and we see it every day. And it's important for us as a team that we embrace that and we embrace the community. And again, as a commercial leader, uh, it makes good business sense. You know, we, we do a lot of things in our business uh, commercially as well. So uh, it certainly makes commercial sense uh, to be part of uh, all communities and, and, and have that diversity within our hotels. Thank you, Shane. Any, uh, David, uh, Salome, do you want to jump in on this question as well? Yes. No. Um, oh, sorry, would you like to go first, David? Go, go ahead. Go okay. ahead. All right. So um, I think in order to bring this up in our, in our company that we work, we, it's always driven by a personal need to, to, uh, to actually embrace and, and speak loudly about the importance of being fully inclusive, and actually embracing diversity. So uh, I had definitely a personal need uh, of my own ever since I, I think I was uh, born, which I was born in a very small island, which was Cyprus. And uh, I, was, uh, I was very much refined in, uh, in a space where uh, diversity was not accepted and not, uh, not a very inclus inclusive space. And that's why I started traveling around and trying to actually make a statement and work in different industries in order to make sure that we focus on people because at the end of the day it's all about people and the power of people and it doesn't matter where they are from what walk of life they are from what their prefer preferences are and differences so i found my home in costa navarino costa navarino is um a prime sustainable destination in the peloponnese it's in a corner of the mediterranean it's a, a beautiful place where actually, according to Homer, it's the first place where hospitality was written first. Uh, the Greek word philoxenia for hospitality, which means be a friend to a stranger. And it doesn't say a stranger that is this type or that type, any kind of stranger. And uh, this is the basis of the philosophy of what we do in this destination. It's all based on deep respect for people. It's, there's a huge respect for our history, our culture, our nature, but there's immense respect for diversity and the, 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 the guests that actually chose us as a destination to come for a holiday from every, everywhere in the world. There's huge, huge respect for all the people that have chosen us as a place to work because we've, you know, we're very proud to have some of the best talent in, hospita in the hospitality industry work at Costa Navarino. So we feel it's our obligation to ensure that every individual feels truly empowered to unleash their potential and every guest feels free and open to feel comfortable with whatever they are. So uh, this is the basis of the need behind focusing and making sure that LGBTQ plus inclusion is there 100%. Thank you so much, Salome. That's a wonderful story about your origins and about home. Oh my God, I had no idea that. Yes, yes. I, I can share the story with you. It's a lovely story, actually. <laughs> no more. David. Um, thank you, everyone. Um, I just want to echo exactly what um, Shane and Salome has all said um, about how the, the, the hospitality industry as a whole um, is, has a lot of, of, of members of, of, of the LGBTQIA plus community 
all over. It's enshrined in, 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 in every aspect of us. We are a community that is all over in the world. And there are times where we do not feel represented or we don't feel safe. And as a royal portfolio, one of our, our values is to, to have a culture of mutual respect, trust, and integrity. Um, and we are very, um, 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 very serious about this. And, 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 and to show that we're very serious about having this culture of mutual respect, trust, and integrity means that we need to understand what our staff are going through. We need to understand where we are so we can help them and, 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 and make them feel free at, 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 at work. And once that is done, if they've got a platform where they can share their views without without feeling um, without feeling disempowered, they will be comfortable enough to to give that same experience to our guests who sometimes form part of the LGBTQI community. Thank you so much, David. Um, yeah, some wonderful uh, reasons about the importance and the urgency of uh, having inclusive spaces. And sometimes it seems obvious to us that of course we want to welcome everyone, but unfortunately we know the reality of the world is not uh, like that, right? And so it is important to state it, it's important to make sure you take the steps uh, to, to really become inclusive and that you educate yourselves in what being inclusive means, because of course, even though it seems like common sense, uh, a lot of times we really do need the tools and understanding about how to address a community and how to welcome uh, you know, a specific community to be able to actually create a, a space where they feel like they belong. Um, so I want to continue uh, asking a, a question to you, Salomi. Um, I you were the first, uh, well, Cust the W Custom Navarino was the first hotel uh, that became uh, IGLT created in the world, as we mentioned earlier. Um, and uh, and Custom Navarino itself as a destination has done a lot to, you know, becoming welcoming destination. What uh, can you highlight some of the strategies that you have implemented to create that welcoming experience for travelers? Yes, of course. Um, well, it started about two years ago when uh, we initiated a collaboration with um, Hospitable Me. I'm, I'm sure you're uh, familiar with Hospitable Me and Billy Colbert where we wanted to um, have a very thorough training and a very thorough audit of everything we do so that it, we ensure that it is fully inclusive. So this was a process that took about six months where we went through all our communications. We went through face-to-face um, -face role playing, uh, management training and aligning everybody behind the notion of being fully uh, inclusive and welcoming to the LGBTQ community. So we've assigned an LGBTQ plus ambassador. We develop gender neutral restrooms for W Costa Navarino. We have gender neutral amenities. Yes, actually the gender neutral restrooms, I think we were, we were uh, quite pioneering in the way we've uh, stabbed that one. So we can share any, with anyone who wants uh, uh, to see visuals. Uh, we hosted also a gig in collaboration with the uh, Gay Times. We, um, we, in W Costa Navarino, there was, um, uh, we wanted to decorate the space with pieces of art. So we made sure we had um, quite a few queer artists, which were actually students of the Athens School of Fine Arts, uh, who have, uh, it was, you know, a win-win. It was actually a double uh, win in terms of success because you have the young talent which usually they have difficulty in expressing themselves and and coming out so you gave the, the the space for them not only to come out but to showcase their talent and their work so some of the pieces of art around W Costa Navarino is by the students of the Athens School of Fine Arts um, and uh, we also obviously did a thorough audit in all our communications. Of course, another big uh, strategy is that this year we have um, uh, we are celebrating Pride, the full month of June. We have activities ongoing all month from parties, DJs, uh, art exhibitions, and and basically even th there's also this one. Um, uh, special action, which I don't know, it moves me a lot. Um, the revenue coming from a specific cocktail and a specific um, a dish 
actually goes to the helpline of the LGBTQ plus community to support them to come out and support their family to to be uh, to come to terms with it and support them as well. So uh, I think this is very moving. This is huge proof that you know we we don't just talk the talk, but we walk it as well, and we put our uh, you know action our words into action. Well, that's really wonderful, and I think you you can have put it in 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 better words uh, just right there. And it's this is exactly what uh, accredited is about. It's about proving that you have walked the walk, right? Because before, you know, uh, IGLT members apply and 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 they can, you know, almost any uh, business in, in in the tourism industry can become an IGLT member because membership is about creating a space where people can do business, uh, find like-minded businesses, learn, get resources. But it is not about proving that you have done the work to become LGBTQ plus welcoming. And this is exactly what IGLT accredited does. It helps prove that you have done the work through a standardized process and uh, a criteria. So talking about that process, I would love to ask Shane um, why why you applied to why did the um, uh, Swiss tell Nankai Osaka decide to apply to accredited? And what was that experience like for you? How long did it take? Was it difficult for you to prove that you complied with all the criteria? You know, maybe to get the audience to understand a little bit about what it's like to go through the process. Yes, yeah, yeah, certainly. Uh, I guess um, uh, when, when we first started talking about it, we actually started talking about uh, weddings uh, and uh, I guess holding, um, uh, LGBTQ plus weddings in the hotel. So that's how the conversation kind of started. And then uh, during that conversation, we we then moved on to uh, talking amongst the team and uh, there was discussion about the the, the convention and, and that, that uh, Osaka was in the bid to get IGLT a, uh, into Osaka in Japan. So we started on that journey and, and wanting to find out more information about it. Uh, to understand you know, what do we need to do, then we then we come across the accreditation, and uh, with no other, I guess, hotels, uh, one within a core, uh, uh, and within Asia being accredited, uh, we saw it as a huge opportunity for us to to gain that accreditation. Uh, I guess the the journey for us. Uh, at first, uh, Japan, again, can be a very conservative country. Uh, we were a little bit nervous to start with, um, but we were fortunate enough to have a lot of support around us uh, within the, uh, the community as well uh, to, to help us along its way. So uh, I, I do remember uh, going through some, uh, some training and awareness with our team. Uh, and we do have a in some aspects of a hotel, we have an older population of employees. So uh, at first I was thinking, oh, how, how is this going to go? Uh, when we started, uh, I, I was very pleasantly surprised at how uh, engaged uh, our team became and how interested they became. Uh, we have a portion of our employees who, um, this is quite normal, um, but I guess some of our back of house employees who may not have been exposed to a number of, I guess, front of house. Uh, that's where I, I guess we were a little bit nervous, but uh, it was actually a lot of fun, uh, a, a lot of noise, a, a lot of uh, interaction. Uh, and sometimes it can be difficult to get interaction from any staff from time to time. So uh, this, was, this was very surprising for us. Uh, once we'd gone through that, that awareness and uh, there became, I guess, discussions internally uh, within our management team, and but just the, with the frontline team as well, wanting to understand a little bit more. Uh, then it became quite easy after that uh, because everyone was on board, everyone wanted to know, um, everyone wanted to be the first also to be accredited uh, in Asia and in Japan. And we are also very lucky and we have great owners uh, and a core uh, are very supportive. So uh, using the resources we have as a company uh, made it quite easy for us. So the journey itself uh, is not over. Actually, I think it's actually started more than anything. And uh, we've, we've 
we have a lot of discussion, certainly within our diversity committee now, uh, on what else can we do? What else can we do to uh, make a difference? And um, the excitement of having uh, the event come to Osaka uh, in a country that you know is, is super polite and super safe, but also super conservative, uh, will make a big difference. Uh, not only to the LGBTQ plus community, um, but to a number of businesses and a number of organisations uh, will start to wake up and open up uh, uh, and, and become more accepting. So I, I do hope we are at the forefront of that and other organisations will jump on board and go, uh, if they can do it, we can do it um, and use us. You know, We're not here to be the only one. Uh, we're here to assist others uh, within the community to also get the accreditation. So um, uh, for, other, for us, that's, that's pretty exciting. Thank you so much, Shane. One of the things that I really liked about what you said was how you had to get everyone in the hotel involved, you know, from uh, directors to front-facing staff to even, you know, uh, staff, uh, non-front-facing staff um, to really understand uh, you know, why you're doing this and the importance of this and train everyone across uh, the entire uh, property. And, you know, that is the big difference about a program like Accredited versus just having a logo, right? Uh, or yes. a pay, pay uh, you know, um, sort of system, which is basically just paying to obtaining, um, you know, the logo or recognition from uh, X or Y company, right? So it really does make a difference to involve everyone. And that leads me to the next question, um, which is for David, because you, uh, from everyone here at the, uh, at the panel, you come from a human resources, resources perspective, right? So um, I want to ask you, David, can you think of any specific challenges or barriers that LGBTQ plus employees face in the hospitality sector uh, and how can they be, or how have you addressed them? Um, 100%, and thank you for that question. Um, there are so many instances that you can think of of, of the, the challenges that the LGBTQI members um, face. This can range from um, limited access just to employment, um, refusal from employment, often dismissals, um, denial of training opportunities, promotions, and just access to general support in the workplace. Um, you'll find that uh, you know, th there is evidence of, of, of pay gap differences between the LGBTQI community and non-members of the community. Um, there is uh, limited avenues for workplace disputes as well as resolutions to harassment and bullying because so there's this preconceived idea that, oh, they're just in that community so they don't really matter. They can create, there's a lot of animosity that can be created from coworkers and supervisors you know, name calling, physical violence, gossiping, sexual violence. Um, there's many things that can kind of also include into this, which is things like um, gender poli po um, policing, where even something as small as dress code can make someone uh, can make someone feel like their sense of belonging, safety, and inclusion in the workplace is 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 being is being um, targeted. Um, how we handle this at the silo is um, we we really look at the good practice uh, and in terms of what our policies and procedures are. Are we are we really being um, equal in all our in all our practices and our laws? Um, are we making sure that um, the, you know the pays are are, are are more to do with actual um, output rather than who the person is? Um, we're looking at things like more education and training um, about you know, to the stakeholders of the LGBTI. QIA plus community and the non um, non members too, um, in terms of things like educational interventions, um, broad dialogues with the staff, diversity workshops, um, working on streamlining and mainstreaming LGBTQIA plus issues in existing programs. A bigger point of this is also looking at our leadership. Our leadership is the one that looks after these teams the entire time. They need to be trained to understand the issues that are faced by LGBTQIA plus members and be able to um, address them in a sensitive way, but um, 
and, and it comes from how are we educating them? Are they aware of what, what's happening, what the policies are, what the discrimination is, what we do in certain situations? And all of this has kind of been really helped by the accreditation process because all of these things are covered in the accreditation process. It's been fantastic because you're like, okay, this is we're doing this and it's helping the staff. And you can see the difference in the interactions that the, 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 the staff have within themselves as well as the guests. It's opened up great conversations and it's led to a lot more people feeling a bit more free and happier staff equals a more engaged staff, which is you know, a, a happier business and happier guests. Absolutely. So, uh, yeah, so wonderful to hear that perspective. And uh, it's so true, you know, uh, really creating a, a welcoming and, and belonging, uh, you know, a space where people feel like they belong uh, is so important um, to have, you know, engaged staff, staff that actually wants to come to work every day and, you know, enjoys uh, being in their place of work and interacting with other uh, colleagues and with guests as well, right? And you, especially in the hospitality industry, you want happy staff so that they can be, uh, you know, happy for your guests as well so that, uh, you know, uh, all around everybody gets a good experience. Um, I specifically, uh, as a gender non-conforming person, when I, uh, you know, I'm at a restaurant or a hotel, uh, a lot of time. A lot of times I find that people assume my gender and they either call me miss or mister because there's a lot of formality in the hospitality world, right? There's usually uh, a lot of uh, titles that need to be used and addressed. And so people, uh, you know, how do you call a, a gender non-conforming person? Like, what do you address them? Or do you ask them beforehand, right? All of these things are things that can be trained and can be uh, implemented in processes and policies. And uh, also, uh, like Salome mentioned, you know, uh, having gender neutral bathrooms can be so important to make somebody feel like they belong, uh, particularly in my case as well, you know, like when there isn't an option for a gender neutral bathroom, you know, it's having to make the choice of whether to enter the women's bathroom and make the women there uncomfortable or enter the men's bathroom and then get all the looks from the men uh, because um, or, you know, masculine enough, uh, per se. Uh, so all of these things are things that are addressed in the trainings that uh, have to be done in order to become accredited. So, uh, you know, these are things that sometimes uh, we don't even think of or, you know, that are unconscious um, in, in our heads uh, or that for us, it seems like obvious, um, you know, you know, obvious thoughts, but in reality, they aren't. And, uh, and we need uh, to address them and explicitly state them. Um, all right, so let's continue on. And I, I would love to go back to Salome and, and ask you, Salome, uh, you know, throughout all these years, you know, having become the first um, you know, hotels uh, to implement gender neutral bathrooms in your destination and in, 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 in the area and region uh, to becoming the first uh, hotel or having the first hotel in your destination uh, to be accredited in the world, um, you know, can you think of, Throughout all this uh, years and, and and process of of becoming welcoming and inclusive to LGBTQ plus travelers or to all travelers, can you think of a success story that can speak and highlight that progress that you have done uh, in furthering LGBTQ plus inclusion? Yes. Well, when we started the um, we, when we started this uh, process with um, the training and involving everybody from the owner until the, up to uh, the associates that work at the hotels, we realized that we have been inclusive all along. We just didn't really communicate it and we didn't really talk about it. And it, you know, the uh, IGLTA accreditation was actually a great forum, a, a great space to, not a space, but actually it was a, um, it was it gave us a reason to talk about it it gave us a reason to go out and say you know we, we actually we're accredited and we do all this all these things and it was impressive that we got a lot of um response from the local media because you know it's a it's an area which is not does not have any other uh hospitality venues which have declared that they are lgbtq plus friendly and they said you know it's great that somebody is actually leading the way. It's great that somebody is actually creating the space for LGBTQ plus to come to this area for to feel welcome, to 
to actually change the mindsets and the perspectives in, in the region. So uh, what they've written about this is that, you know, this is an example that many others should follow. So we felt actually very proud with that. And we also felt very proud, um, and I feel it's a great success, that everybody was engaged in this. It was unbelievable, the, um, the excitement uh, of every single colleague of mine when we were actually entering this progress, this, this process two years ago, and even ongoing, and they keep coming up with new ideas and things to do in the hotel uh, in order to make uh, the space as welcoming and as inclusive as possible. So, you know, I think the, the, the accreditation, the communication, and the whole process is a success in itself. Thank you so much, Salome. Uh, it's just wonderful to get that sort of um, confirmation mm -hmm. that you've been doing the right thing, right? Whenever somebody mentions it, it's, it was important to me or I see what you've done, I see the work that you have done because I can feel uh, you know, that I am welcome here. I think that just getting one comment from somebody saying that yes. makes the entire work worth yeah. it because that's really why we are in this industry in the first place. We wanna make people feel welcome, or at least it's in my particular case. The reason I love working in the tourism industry is because I love welcoming people. I love giving people good experiences. I love when somebody uh, you know, truly uh, is able to remember a good experience that I helped curate. Uh, and so, um, yeah, so what a better way um, to get a gratification for, of that than to you know, be confirmed that you're doing the right thing and that you're and, doing the right steps. And also inspire others to do the same thing as well. That, I think there's a huge power in that. I mean, it's, it's, it's almost like the fuel to every single one of us working in the industry every day to wake up inspired and engaged that, you know, not only we welcome everybody, we, we actually create a difference and we actually make a statement where people are inspired and they want to follow the same example. So I think that's also very important as well. True. Um, all right. We have a few minutes left. So I'm just going to um, ask Two more questions. Shane, I would love to hear from you um, if you can tell us in, you know, in, in, in short words, what would you tell other colleagues in the industry, in the hospitality industry, or also other colleagues in your, um, uh, in, in, in a core, right, in, in, in your brand, why they should consider pursuing IGLT accredited? Um, first thing, I'll, uh, again, we've already communicated to our team is, is get on board. Uh, you know, I guess the accreditation is maybe something that we, we weren't aware of. So uh, get on board and, and be inclusive. And as um, uh, Salome said, a lot of hotels are already doing this and it's just a matter of actually telling people about it. So uh, my my message to, to a core and, and even to our competitors uh, is, is get on board. The, the more, uh, the bigger network we can create for safe, safe hotels and safe uh, spaces, uh, you know, the better it is for everybody. So, you know, and, and I guess in short, uh, everyone get on board, be inclusive and get accredited, uh, you know, and uh, let's create a network where uh, across the globe and, and in some countries it can be quite difficult, but where we can um, have that network available so that way uh, we open up to the world. And as Simon said, a lot of hotels are already doing this. So, um, let, let's get that accreditation so that way we can um, keep talking about that message uh, and start and start that journey for everybody. That's wonderful. That is wonderful. And uh, I do want to highlight that uh, we talked to the, I mean, well, of course, a global partner of IGLTA. And so we talked to the Paris headquarters um, often and they have been so interested from the beginning uh, of this program, um, and they have really invested in understanding it and making sure that their hotels understand it. And we're actually carrying some calls next week with uh, your, uh, with the, all of the hotels of the core. I mean, languages. Hopefully, you'll be able to join um, about um, not just uh, credit, but about IGLT in general. All right, one last question, and this one's for David. And, um, and this question is it's about um, a problem that LGBTQ plus people have in general in, in terms of 
representation, right? Uh, sometimes we are not well represented in decision-making roles or decision-making um, processes. Uh, and, and that leads to, you know, us not being uh, included in, you know, policies or in, in different uh, results that come from decision-making. So could you give uh, hospitality businesses any tips or um, any recommendations as to how to make sure that LGBTQ plus voices and perspective are represented in those decision-making processes and in leadership roles? 100%. First thing is research, research, research. Speak to the members of the community. Find out their opinion, not just as a formality, but actually hear them. Um, listen to what they have to say. Um, you know, what we've done in our property is that we've created an ideas forum that is exactly for the, the, this reason, where we have included a diverse panel of staff members from different levels of, 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 of in, on the hierarchy to be able to say, this is a policy we're thinking of implementing um, for this and this reason. What are your thoughts on it? And listen to what they have to say. It does not hurt anyone to just go and ask a question and say, what do you have to say about this? And you might get some great nuggets of wisdom in that and create a nice little inclusive policy that includes everyone else's ideas. And once you have that, the beauty of that is that you get people's buy-in. When people feel like they've been a part of the decision-making process in whatever policy and procedure you're making, and they will immediately um, um, hold it on a flagpole and actually represent that whatever policy you're trying to do and action it. That is so, so true, uh, David. And I would love to add uh, to that, that, um, you know, LGBTQ plus people are not a monolithic group. Uh, we are not represented by 1%. Uh, mm -hmm. Again, there's an acronym for a reason. There's a very diverse group of people that make up this community. Um, which means that there's a lot of diversity and a lot of, um, you know, different uh, ways of thinking uh, and understanding reality within the LGBTQ plus people. So when you're coming up with a policy or with a strategy to address this group, try and get some representation or voices or opinions from, you know, a, a diverse group as well uh, that represents different people within LGBTQ plus, uh, you know, the LGBTQ plus community as a whole, right? Make sure you ask trans people uh, or gender non-conforming people uh, overall, right? Make sure you ask, you know, lesbians, gay people, uh, bisexual people, right? Make sure that you at least get a, a diverse opinion about um, about any strategy that you want to put into place. Um, because as we have seen it um, more uh, often or more than we would like to, uh, you know, companies sometimes come up with policies that are not well consulted and it backfires and it makes them push backwards even more than you know where they started. So uh, let's make sure that when you do uh, think of policies or when you do want to implement a strategy, uh, consult uh, different people. And of course, IGLTA is always here as a resource for any tourism business to come to us uh, and uh, obtain any help or recommendation as well. So I want to thank everyone so much for being in this panel. Uh, we are about to end, but before we end, uh, if there's any question on the floor, uh, please uh, do ask it now. You can also turn on your mics uh, and ask any of our panelists a question uh, before we close this call. There is a question by Levi Hankings, and they are asking, um, is there a guide for travel advisors to use when screening potential vendors that are not accredited? Um, so. First of all, our accreditation or IGLT accredited for now is only available to accommodation businesses. So businesses that are hotels, uh, any, any type of business that provides accommodation to travelers, right? Um, so um, we, do, uh, we do have, uh, we, we are getting uh, or preparing to launch uh, a directory within our microsite. You can go to iglta.org slash accredited and you will uh, go to our microsite that tells you about how to apply, the specs of the program. And within that microsite, we are going to have a directory of all the hotels that have accredited status. And it will be updated uh, you know, uh, every, every time new hotels become accredited. Uh, so we will have that uh, resource available for all travel advisors to use uh, so that they can you know, try and use accredited hotels 
as often as they can, especially for LGBTQ plus groups or bookings. Um, and so uh, I'm not sure if that answers your question, but for now, that is uh, how we will be uh, making sure that people are aware of which hotels are accredited, especially for travel advisors, that will be a huge resource. So again, if anyone wants to come in and jump in and, and, and say or ask a question, um, more than welcome to. Uh, if not, I just want to thank everyone for attending, everyone for supporting this uh, program for uh, from uh, the beginning and supporting this lunch. Again, this is so important today uh, to make sure that you really uh, you know, take a, a, a stand on this and you really uh, support uh, inclusion uh, by actually doing the work and proving that you've done the work so that travelers uh, you know, they are less anxious when they are booking their travel and they can feel uh, certain that when they arrive at the hotel that they are going to be staying in, in the destination that they're visiting, that they will be able to be themselves, to express themselves freely, uh, but also feel that they belong and not have to worry about, you know, um, being discriminated when they are just trying to relax, have a good time, and you know, be on their holiday or work trip, and uh, you know, they can actually focus on the things that really matter. So, thank you everyone for being here. Thank you everyone for caring so much about inclusion, about uh, you know, welcoming LGBTQ plus travelers, uh, about creating spaces of belonging. This is a conversation that will that is ongoing. Uh, it does not end uh, here. Uh, there are so many different perspectives, and this conversation evolves uh, as you know, as we change clothing, as you would say in Spanish. It, it's it's really uh, it continuously uh, evolving, and uh, new perspectives are always changing it. So um, we're we're always happy to continue hearing different voices in the industry. So thank you for being here. Uh, we hope you have a great evening, night, or morning, uh, and we'll see you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Salome, David, and Shane. Thank you.